Right. We're doing a demonstration of the, the common scan of what the precipitator does, that it shows that there's dirt in the water. Here we have two cups of reverse osmosis water, which aren't conducting any electricity. Here we have a precipitator, which um, is often used to sell RO systems and um, to sell re reverse osmosis water. What it does is it basically puts main power through a copper electrode and an uh, aluminium electrode. Then if the water conducts electricity, say if there's salt in the water, then the copper and aluminium exchanges and that causes the water to change colour. Now, to demonstrate, we'll put the precipitator on here for about a minute in um, water that that doesn't conduct ele any electricity. As you can see, there's nothing really happening. It's just standing in, in the water. I don't think there's any point in keeping it longer than that. There's nothing happening. Just turn that off. Then we'll take just a, a pinch of normal table salt, which is perfectly healthy, nothing wrong with that. Put that into the water. Just give it a bit of a stir. And we'll do a CDS reading again. Up there. Okay, it's got a little bit of minerals from the electrodes there. There's this side. Okay, hold on. <laughs> oh, okay. It seems to have a lot of minerals in there and it doesn't want to cooperate. It turns off if I put it in there. But the result is, if we put this little machine in here now, if you have a look in there, you can see it's immediately reacting and ion exchange is taking place, that, thus changing the color of the water and creating the perception that the water is contaminated and dirty, which in, in fact isn't true because, as we've just shown, that, that is simply a result of the water conducting electricity, which we created by adding salt. Okay. Oh, mm. that oh, was there interesting, you go. wasn't it? Yeah, that was, that was quite interesting. Makes you wonder that... Isn't, what I thought was interesting was that the amount of salt he added to the uh, to the cup. That was only a little bit, wasn't it? It was only a, a small little pinch, oh, wasn't I, it? I like how he said that it was, um, it's, quite, uh, it's, it's good for you, a little bit of salt. And I'm thinking, well... Is it? Well, if you were a lion, yeah, yeah, in in Africa, and you sort of hunted down your gazelle, yeah, yeah, for sure, dinner, yeah, yeah, would you add a bit of salt to it? I don't know. I suppose you could go and find some vinegar. Maybe go yeah, and yeah. find some vinegar for well, your, I don't for think your they, meat. I don't think uh, other animals have uh, salt on their foods. No, I don't think. I don't think either. Yeah, mm. sure. Anyway. But um, yeah, because they used to use salt to preserve meat. And it has, a, right, it has yeah. a drying effect, salt. Mm. So it makes you wonder that, uh, you know, is it that good to eat to begin with? Mm. Yeah, well, yeah. sure. But uh, to getting back to the electrolyzer, that was quite interesting, wasn't it? Because some yeah. people seem to think that all of that uh, black guck, guck, muck, was actually yeah. in the water. Oh, right, well, yeah. But yeah. it was reverse osmosis water, that he, and he, all he did was added uh, some salt. Salt, yeah. Oh, it must have come from the salt then. No, it can't. It can't. It couldn't have come. Couldn't have come from the salt. But another thing also. Did you see how hot it? Came? Yeah, it was, it was steaming. Steam. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, it was steaming. Mm -hmm. I reckon it was probably boiling. Oh, it could it, have been. It's a very fast reaction though. Yeah. Sure, but uh, yeah, it makes you think about these water electrolyzers. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't it? Mm. Uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. Yeah, well, we're back again. Annoying people with our views and opinions because... Oh, because loads of people really dislike hearing other people's views and opinions. Yeah, that is so true. It's absolutely true. It's unbelievable. 
what, what annoys me, and that is when you get to a certain point in your life and you begin to wake up and realise that people don't get on. No. Doesn't matter where you go. No. Yeah. Doesn't matter where you go. Yeah. People, human beings, just don't get no. on with one yeah. another. That's right. You know, you can walk into uh, you can walk into a committee meeting on the uh, Houses of Parliament, and you can go be like a fly on the wall. Yeah. And you can listen to them all bickering and fighting amongst yeah. themselves. Yeah. You know. Wait. You can go to council meeting as well. Yeah. You can hear the councillors all bickering and fighting over yeah. each other to uh, each other. Well, I was only talking to a woman today who who used to be a, a councillor. And she was actually talking about how they were bickering, bickering and fighting over who wants to become mayor. I know, yeah, it's just it's just stupid, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's amazing how it all actually, um, how it all manages to tick over. over. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know, I mean, human beings, you know, some people, somebody might think they're the scourge of the earth. Mm. Yeah, but the thing is, is that if they were all equal, there wouldn't be any bickering. They, they are. They equal. are all equal. That's the thing. Oh, they right, are yeah. all equal. Yeah. There's no difference between. There's no difference between any any human being on the earth, mm. really, because they all have to live a life. They all experience life. Mm. You know, so you know they should be given equal, um, equal treatment. Absolutely. But yeah. in society, yeah. we don't get that, do we? We yeah. get it's unfair. It's there's a lot of inequality. In society, isn't oh yeah, but I have to say that you could have someone who's quite, let's say, wealthy, um, who experiences quite a lot of things in their life, but the oh, actual yeah. quality of their life is quite poor. I know, yeah. Even though they've got lots of money, they go on holiday quite regularly. Um, they have a very active um, engagement engagement. Uh, uh, agenda, yeah. d- weekly, daily, monthly agenda, yeah. and yet they, they have a poor quality of life. You yeah. know, nobody wants to know, nobody cares about them. Yeah. Um. You know what? What's the point of it? You know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. And all they do most for most of their life is pretend. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh well. Uh, well anyway, uh, what have we got on for everyone's displeasure for today, then, Peter? Well, for everyone's displeasure, we are going to have a look at. We're going to ask people this: What have helium and nitrogen? Got in common, absolutely. Of course. Now we've mm. touched on a few of this before, have, have we not? Yeah, but this this is all thanks to someone who gave us a link to a video oh. on helium production. Oh, <sighs> yeah. We'll put it at the bottom. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll give it. We'll give it. We'll, we'll give him a mention. Yeah. And um, on the bottom. So put a note there, not to forget yeah. to add him. Add yeah. in in. Give him some recognition because we but, do, we are grateful for our for the, any material that uh, any anybody wants to send us to have a look at you know but it's not always the case that we remember who sent it to us yeah I know. but the main thing is is that the the video is all about how they manufacture helium and it confirmed something that we um, highlighted and, uh, sure. many months ago. Absolutely. And really, basically, we, what we could also put forward in this video is an alternative method in order to produce helium. Yeah. So, so it, you know, if you've, got your, if you've got your patent ready, you know, if you're into your patents, here you go, here's a bit of, uh, this could give you a bit of money. Oh, well, anyway. So could we, be. So we're going to have a look at that. We're going to have a look at. So we're going to show people the weighing of our the calcium metal that I've. Oh right, yeah, your, kept your calcium a, metal. Kept in a poly- sure. Kept in a food bag for well over a year. Mm. So we're going to show people that. We're going to have a look at air containing oxygen video. Oh right, yeah, sure, yeah, well, allegedly. We're going to have a look at uh, uh, an ad on buses. Oh yeah, that's we actually a saw an ad on a bus that we thought was we quite thought, well. Oh, wow, that, this, is, this is getting bad. This is yeah. yeah, absolutely of course. And we got some stuff on an electrolyzer. We actually have bought an electrolyzer just like the guy from South Africa. Oh, was that In where the, he was from? Yeah. Was oh, South okay. Yeah, sure. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing, and we've been yeah, we've been putting it through its paces, yeah. and uh, it seems to be doing well. And we may have a we may have reached a point where our um, where our understanding of water has slightly changed a little bit yep. to accommodate new information. Absolutely, yeah. and that's what it's all about. And that is when you when you receive new information, you have to assimilate and accommodate that information into your own understanding. 
because that's how you can change. That's how you change and develop your yeah, your understanding. Yeah. So instead of rejecting it, we're actually going to welcome it, take it on board. Yeah. Say hello to it. Absolutely, of course, and uh, change. Uh, come on, let's go. Change on. our views, but uh, only slightly, of course. But, um, but so we're not, we're let's not have a little look at this boss then. Should we have a little oh, right. look we're at this We're not going to cover that though. Oh, oh no! I think we should leave that until right, okay. uh, another time because we need to do we need to do something with it. Right, so let's go, let's go. Oh, mate! Oh, I know what we'll do. We'll finish off. We'll we'll, we'll finish off on that. Yeah. Yeah. And give everyone a little teaser for our next video. Oh, we can do. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be a great one. That will. Yeah, sure. Come if on you can remember. Sure. So. Um. Yeah, bosses. Here we go. Um. Here we go. Yeah, we walked past our local bus station and there was a bus there that was driving, going into, from Chester to Hollywell. Oh, yeah, Hollywell. Hollywell. And, and there was an advert on the bus. Oh, there you go, yeah, so, of course. And become a volunteer for the NSPCC. Yeah, all you, apparently, yeah, the Der here in Derry, Derry Journal, here we go, all you need is a passion to support children and young people. people. Childline has called on anyone with a passion to do more for children and young pe young people to consider becoming a volunteer at the local base. Now, um, so this Derry, this is obviously in Ireland, but um, so obviously it's a national Northern Ireland, Ireland, it's a national it? campaign. National campaign, and we've seen a, we've seen a boss with the same kind of uh, uh, advert, advert, you know, plastered all over it, talking about the NS NSPCC. Talking and on the other side of the bus, it's got um, about child line. Yeah, you know, and so we think, well, why is it all of a sudden we've seen all of these buses with with the child line? No, why is it child, NSPCC? Why is it child line? The NSPCC is asking for a lot of volunteers nationwide. Absolutely, of course, it's as if they're having a recruiting spree. No, or if, if more and most importantly, it's as if the numbers of calls. Are increasing. Yeah, and they just can't. They just can't cope. So they're having to um, recruit, and this is one their way of recruit addressing the problems that they're facing. Yeah, because more and more children are experiencing abuse at home, problems at home. home. Yeah, and so uh, they're phoning up. Yeah, hello, is that child line? Yeah, oh, yeah, hi, yeah, I'm, I'm living with my mum and dad and they're always fighting and arguing yeah. and I just feel neglected and yeah, I just... Yeah, they're making you know, my life a misery. misery. Yeah, I just feel so unhappy and I'm just so depressed, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, they're taking all of their frustrations out on me, yeah. you know, blah, but, blah, blah. But I'm not happy anymore. Yeah, but the trouble is with this society and that is they don't actually um, uh, educate people on how to... Um, how Health. best to produce children... Yeah. for the benefit of that child so sure. that they live a happy yeah. and healthy life. Yeah, it's, it really is the case that many yeah. children born into this world are born because of the needs of the parents and not the needs of the child, if you know what I mean. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Sure. But the trouble is, is that by bringing children into the world, like um, the children who ring up Childline, you think the amount of jobs it creates, creating. Sure. Yeah, it's like the counselling service here. Well, we'll just read this here. Look, it says, uh, The counselling service, which has had a base in Derry since 2007, currently has 43 volunteers. You would have thought yeah. that would be enough, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, they need more volunteers to help them answer more calls from children and young people who are in need. And also, that's, that's telling us, that's telling us that there's more people ringing up Childline, ringing up the NSPCC, because they're being abused, treated badly and unfairly. Oh, yeah, but we've, we've also got to remember that because it's done through a telephone system, that telephone system it forms part of a network, so they could pick up a call from a child who's living in Derbyshire. Absolutely, of or course. Or in Kent, or in Somerset. Or wherever. In somewhere else, because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, absolutely, of course. Live. But it just goes to show that obviously what we're seeing are we are noted because I, I personally when I first saw a boss with this on it I, I just couldn't believe it I thought wow what's happening to the world what's happening to the society I'm living in yeah, no, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean wow this well, is all, like all in my face yeah all it's showing is a lack of education absolutely lack of, lack of proper education like a lack of proper education for yeah. parents yeah or for so, potential parents. parents yeah 
Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's not, it's pitiful, really. It's mm. piss poor, really. It's it's uh, shameful. Yeah. In our, in our view. Yeah. In our view, this is absolutely shameful. Absolutely and shameful. Then, then there's the NSPCC. Child abuse must stop, full stop. Absolute, absolute trot, trot of rubbish, and isn't that, it? That of course. campaign went and uh, came and went. Came and went, went, yeah, came and gone, wasn't it? You yeah. know. We've got another one here. Here's another. This well, is I suppose they don't have a picture of Esther Ranson. Oh, no, we're not going to do that. Oh, right, Esther Ranson, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the bus. On the bus, yeah, waving you know, to everyone. Esther Ranson, who didn't notify the police about uh, Jimmy Savile. Yeah, fl- fl- here we go. Fl- ad buses, here we go. Yeah, Belfast bus and coach photos, here we go. Yeah, they, yeah, this is in Belfast as well. So, you know, seeing them in Ireland, Northern Ireland, Yeah, you know. So oh, if you've seen see. one in your local area, let us know. Let us know, you know. I mean, it's, a, it, it's just, it's absolutely just disgusting, really. You know, I, I'm I'm very ashamed to to even say that I'm, 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 I live in England. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. Just ashamed, yeah. Anyway, mm, of course. Never mind. Anyway, there you go. But what do you expect? I'm surprised they don't have bosses with paedophiles all over it. You know what I mean? So I'm mean, advertising paedophilia. Oh, well, yeah. Well, they may yeah. as well, mightn't they? And, and sexual abusers, you know. Yeah, yeah. Why don't they Child do that? abusers. Child abusers, yeah, absolutely, of yeah. course. Instead of having volunteers. Because they're more or less showing that it's okay to do that. Well, basically, and, of course. You and know. we'll just pick up the pieces. Absolutely, of course, yeah. They can give everyone a broom and a dustpan. Oh, well, yeah. Sweep <laughs> it under the carpet. Sweep it under the carpet. I love it. It's brilliant, isn't it? Of course. Yeah. They should go outside the House of Parliament. Yeah, they? but it's, it just shows that the, the the mentality of this of the people living in the society. Yep, unfortunately, we're living in fucked up times. Unfortunately, there's mm. a lot of people. Anyway, come on, we don't want to be looking at buses. Up, come on, fucked up. But they're pretty, aren't they? Don't you think? No, not really. Anyway, so that's that one. But yeah, yeah shocking, absolutely yeah, shocking, shocking, disgraceful, so, yeah. absolutely disgraceful that one. Yeah. But so next one then, Peter. Yeah. Anyway. Well, let's have a look at our calcium metal. Your, or your calcium My metal. My calcium metal. Now, here we go. I put, you might as well play this one. I'm going now, to. I placed some calcium metal in this bag in November 2019. 2019. And it's now May 2021. And when I weighed this, well, I'm not going to show you the video, but when I actually initially weighed it, it weighed 43 point five one grams. Yeah. Now it's sixty seven point six. Sure. So it's increased uh, so it's increased considerably. In yeah sure. And the bag is sealed. The bag's sealed, but somebody might argue, well uh obviously it could, there could be a leak in the bag. Possibly but possibly but that's kind of I'd say that's irrespective. What is important is there's a significant gain in weight yeah and that gaining weight is due to what then peter do you think well a lot of people would say well it's because it's the calcium metal is reacting with the oxygen in the air uh, that's what a lot of people would it? say yeah does it well to form calcium oxide to form calcium oxide but none of that would react with water and produce like uh you know get exothermic reaction so it can't be calcium so oxide. it can't be calcium, calcium oxide I'd, I'd probably recommend that what's happening here is that it's reacting with the moisture in the air yeah, and basically. it's being decomposed mm. and uh, it's turning, turning what? Turning into calcium hydroxide. Mm. That's what I would say. Oh, because things. you need to you need to heat it up to make it into calcium you, oxide. In order to make it into calcium oxide, you need to heat it up. You, yeah. you can't. Yeah. It's not calcium oxide. Oh, here. yeah, because it, it, in our understanding, for anything to become an oxide, a true oxide, it has to involve heat. Has to involve heat. In there's a, no heat. There's no oxygen. In an atmosphere of air. Yeah. In if, an there's no, of air. if there's no heat and air, there's no oxide. Absolutely, of course. Sure. Because that's all about calogenation. That's all about calogenation. Our substance is calogenated, heated, expands, absorbs the surrounding air. Oh, the surrounding atmosphere, yeah. Surrounding atmosphere, when it contracts, sure. locks in and com- concentrates that. The air, the air, air, absolutely, of course, to and to uh, to uh, to make it become uh, maybe a nitrogenous air or even a ox- oxygen. Hmm. But saying that though, calcium has different properties to other, say, a salt, for example. 
like calcium, we know that calcium oxide, if you place it in water or add water to calcium oxide, should I say? Yeah, yeah. It's quite, it's quite, quite violent reaction. But you could argue that um, all, you, all the calcium oxide has stored inside it is heat. Heat, absolutely. It's latent got... heat. Yep. So if you add water to it, it's good, the water is going to decompose the calcium oxide and release that heat. Absolutely, of course, you know, uh, you know, it's quite easy to work out, you know. But uh, what, one thing it does make you realise, and that is a lot of substances that man produces are, are kind of, if you can use the word, activated. Hmm. They're charged. Yeah. You know, they've charged with the processing of the heat that's involved, uh, blah, 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 blah. So they're charged. So they're all ready to burst into operation, you know. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Whereas th these won't. No. These won't. So you c we can't really call them calcium oxide. So oh, well, we we'd probably say it's just calcium hydroxide, mm. at least, you know. Yeah. Ca uh, calcium metal being decomposed Both by water. water. Mm -hmm. Moisture in the air. Yeah. So there we go. And obviously, if the, the, because the weight's increasing, we can know that we can safely say, I suppose, that the water has actually um, formed part of the weight of the calcium. Well, not only that, but we've also got to remember my view, and that is when they actually, if you've got the materials to make calcium metal, if you actually weighed them, they could actually weigh more than the end product. Oh, sure. Because the end product is more compressed and com com compact. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and of course. It could yeah. be therefore lighter. Yeah, it could be, could be lighter. Yeah. I I've personally have that view that you can have some carbon, you can have some iron oxide. Yeah, yeah, weigh them. Weigh them. Weigh them. And you can have some molybdenum or whatever they add to steel. You can have all your bits, yeah. Weigh them all individually. And the weight of them individually is greater than the actual piece of steel it would make. It would produce, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, so, yeah, it makes you think, doesn't it? Yeah, of course, yeah. So there you go. So that's that one. That's that one over and done with then, Peter. What's next then? What should we do next then? First need, air contains oxygen video. Air contains oxygen air video. What one's that one then? Contains oxygen. What was that one then? What was that one then? Contains what was that one then? I don't know. Well, what was that one? Air contains. Oh, let's oxygen. have a look at this one. Electrolysis. Yeah. Well, I can't. I don't know what that one was. Air contains oxygen video. Oh, oh. it was that. Um, was it that Indian video? Yeah, it was that Indian one. Oh, I right. don't mind rummaging through the through the uh, history. Well, come on, what are we do? Um, yeah, let's go and have a look for this. People uh, are waiting. I know. Waiting yeah, I know. Patiently. Yeah, sure. Just got and to find they don't it. Really want to. Do, wait, do, 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 wait. Do, do. It's that one there, or that one there. Let's do both of them, so we can do both of them. them. Presence of oxygen. Here we go. Now let's have a little listen to this. Here we go. Now we got onto this e-learning video. Um, air contains oxygen experiment. Well. Wow. Um, so we'll play this. It's only one minute twenty three seconds. So I think we should be fine. It's educational. So let's yeah. just have a little listen to this. Okay. Yeah. Air contains air oxygen. Air contains oxygen. Air is not a single entity, but it contains several gases in different percentages. The following activity demonstrates the presence of oxygen in air. Take two glass vessels, place a candle in each of them, and ignite the wicks. Fill the two vessels with water up to a certain level. Place an inverted glass on each candle. The glasses must be of different sizes. After some time, the candle covered with the smaller glass gets extinguished first, followed by the candle in the larger glass. Knowing the fact that air is required for combustion, this just proves that both the glasses contain air, but the larger glass contains more amount of air. The part of air that supports burning is called oxygen. It is also observed that there is some air left inside the glasses after the candles have been extinguished. This part of air that doesn't support burning contains gases such as carbon dioxide, nitrogen and inert gases. 
Nitrogen constitutes 80% of the air. Thus, air is a mixture made up of several gases such as oxygen and nitrogen. Oh, okay, yeah, was that it? That was just a, a that was terrible it. video. That was absolutely r rubbish, wasn't it? Because it's it's basically how does this demonstration actually prove that it's oxygen? Oh, how does a demonstration like this actually prove oxygen is a constituent of air? Or that it's air it's, contains oxygen. Or that air contains it's oxygen. oxygen. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, isn't I know. Yeah. It? Right. I mean, what these people are doing, it's just fucking. But what she's it's like a mind fuck. Yeah. You know? But what what she's. Uh, failing to do in this video is th is this uh, percent of oxygen alleged oxygen in the air because because she's added water to the tray yeah. the water levels meant to rise inside the glass uh, oh yeah sure yeah I'm aware of cup. that but the thing is is that this doesn't show that air contains oxygen no all it shows is that the candles will burn Air in a sealed environment for a certain length of time. Oh, yeah. The bigger the environment, the longer the flame will will last. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Or which survive. Is, which is understandable. Absolutely, which is understandable. I mean, but that doesn't prove that oxygen is a constituent of air. Oh, that's number one. You know, every, you know next where one. we're coming, coming from, from, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Next of course. One. Next one is this one. Uh, this one's even. Uh, this one's even worse. This one's two minutes, so hopefully we can just quickly in go through past videos. I'm sure we should be okay with this. Yeah, yeah we'll ready? be fine. Ready? Listen to this. We will verify presence of oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen gases in air. Verification of presence of oxygen in air. We know that something burns because of oxygen gas. While burning, fire uses oxygen in the air and releases carbon dioxide. If oxygen is removed from surrounding, nothing will burn. To verify the presence of oxygen, lit two candles and cover one candle with a glass jar such that no air enters inside. After some time, you will see that candle inside the jar is put off but outside candle is still lit. Outside candle is still lit because there is oxygen in air. But inside the jar, all the oxygen has been used and thus candle stops burning. Right, I don't. I've got something that's just laughable, isn't it? Yeah, no, no, that's just absolutely all she's stupid. Doing is, all she's doing is cutting off the air supply, supply to the flame, to the flame. That's all. So, but it, it, it doesn't prove that there's oxygen in the air. It doesn't prove oxygen's in the air yeah, at, at all. all. You know, that's yeah. the bit that she's adding. You know, that's her bit that she thinks is there. You know, yeah. because one thing that we have to drive home, and that is, it's our view that oxygen is dry concentrated air absolutely of course yeah. you have to process the air in order to create your oxygen yeah without that processing you've got no oxygen, oxygen. so there's no oxygen as a constituent, constituent of, of the, the air. air okay whereas mainstream says that oxygen is a constituent of the air yeah yeah so you can so in mainstream's understanding you can use air and oxygen interchangeably you could sure but the to say that oxygen is a constituent of air is wrong. Yeah, in our understanding. It, it's, it's totally wrong. wrong. You know, they can't even... This, this video, or this part of the video, is absolutely okay. wrong. But let's carry on and let's have a little look at what they say about carbon dioxide. Go on, let's go. Or even nitrogen. Oxygen has been used and thus candle stops burning. Verification of presence of carbon dioxide in air. When carbon dioxide is mixed with lime water, it changes the color of water. Take some lime water in a beaker. Fill your mouth with air from surrounding and using straw blow it into beaker with lime water. After some time, you will see the change in color of lime water solution to milky white. Color change takes place because carbon dioxide mixes with lime water. Since air inside your mouth is same as surrounding air, it proves the presence of carbon dioxide. Verification of... Yeah, now, straight away you can say, but how does that verify the presence of carbon dioxide as a constituent of air? It doesn't, because it doesn't. all she's doing is she's saying to people that breathing the air and then yeah. blow through a straw into some lime water and the lime water will turn milky. Sure. Now, in our understanding... The 
in your exhaled breath condensate it contains a salt and that salt precipitates out in the lime water sure absolutely and that's course. why it goes milky absolutely it's white yeah because if you think about it, if you've got the air yeah if you've got the air and you put it to use the bicycle pump to and um, pump the air to lime water it won't turn milky, milky. Right. so obviously something's happening in the body to change the or to add a certain uh substance to the airstream yeah. that comes out yeah, yeah basically yeah. you know the, the body's doing that you know i mean it just it does make sense so it's not essentially that it none of it proves the presence of carbon dioxide though no you know it doesn't do that no next one so next one this is the one of presence of nitrogen. verifying the presence of nitrogen yeah, verifying it's verifying yeah you know i mean they've got they're getting all the words wrong here you know yeah. the presence of nitrogen in air to check the presence of nitrogen in air we first need to remove carbon dioxide and oxygen from it oxygen can be removed by burning a candle inside the closed jar after it this same air can be passed through lime water to remove carbon dioxide from it. Remaining gas neither burns anything nor changes the color of lime water. This air is different from oxygen and carbon dioxide and is named as nitrogen. Okay, um, the, the thing is, I mean, it's, 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 sorry, it, it's quite convincing, you know, if you watch the demonstration like this, you know, you burn your candle. Because this is very similar to what Daniel Rutherford did in, in the 1700s. Absolutely, of course, yeah. So you burn your candle, the candle flame goes out, and then you pass that air, that air um, through, sodium, say, sodium hydroxide solution. Or lime water. Or lime water. And then out it comes, and then you collect that air, and you test it to see if it supports combustion. And it doesn't. But how does that prove that that gas was present in the air to, to begin, begin with? It doesn't, because you're actually making that gas. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, the whole the whole process is of burning the flame in the jar. Okay, and then you're creating that air, and then you're bubbling the that air stream through sodium hydroxide or lime water, and then you're capturing the air stream. You know, how do you know that air stream hasn't been made? Because of the processing of the combustion plus the lime water yeah. interaction and the and the yeah. uh, lime water sodium hydroxide, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the thing, you know. None of it actually does prove it one little bit. Yeah. It it it's, it's tight. It gets tiring after all, doesn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. Because you watch all this and you think it's just all rubbish. The, the irony of it is that it's it's one of those things that like stares you right in the face. Yeah, I know. Yeah, sure. Because it's quite easy to read up on Daniel Rutherford and and read up and think, oh, he's discovered nitrogen by yeah. doing this, this, this. Well, wow, what well, isn't he clever? But it's very easy because it's all about how you perceive things. It's it's easy to perceive Daniel Rutherford's meth methodology to think that he's actually produced it. Yeah, he's making it. He's making it. He's, he's making, making it. it happen. He's making it happen. He's creating all of the... Uh, he's doing the magic. Yeah, and this is typical in man's fabricated world. Absolutely, of course, yeah. So you've got to see through all of that, all of those, uh, you know, all of those illusions. Yeah, basically, yeah. To, see, to actually see what's actually happening what's actually happening right in front of you mm. you know so but, but there's there's a couple there uh, demonstrations that are total rubbish that don't yeah. prove or demonstrate the presence of oxygen carbon dioxide and nitrogen in, in the, the air. air yeah they don't, just don't do it at all yep sorry and, and this one air contains oxygen you know sorry. I mean, it's just rubbish and this yep. is elementary science and this is on youtube that's it's supposed rubbish to, and this is on youtube that's supposed to give out good information absolutely of course yeah. so you know i feel sorry for all these kids at school yeah. who uh well they may as well phone up child line aren't they uh, yeah they may as well phone up child yeah line. hello is that esther yeah i'm just I'm, I'm yeah hi esther yeah i'm not happy about my education i'm getting yeah hi esther yeah i'm not happy about the education i'm getting yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm getting blown i think it's all rubbish you know Mm. I feel as if I'm being abused here when I go to school. Oh, well. I think my teachers are abusing me. Yeah. They're abusing my mind. Yeah. You know, because that's what they should be doing, these kids. Yeah. You know, no wonder why they're phoning up. 
child yeah. one. Yeah, no, they're yeah. getting abuse from the parents, and then what makes it worse right. is that when they go to school, they're getting abuse from the kids, from the teachers. Yeah. And the school, because the school isn't really taking their welfare in, into absolutely into, cool. it's, it's, into, it's, into it's consideration yeah. or making it a priority. Yeah, basically. You know, I mean, well, what about me and all this? You know, it's, what it's about a, me. It's a joke. The, yeah. the society you're living in is well, you know, it's a joke. Yeah, sure. But not many people are laughing. But, yeah, not many people are laughing. Yeah. I very rarely see people laughing as they're walking down the street. Yeah, I know. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, I can't see anyone uh, walking... If someone's walking down the street and they see the child line bus go past, you know, you know, you know I mean, laughing at that, I mean, that's quite... Yeah, but a lot of people would just try and ignore it. Sure, yeah, yeah of course. Just but they like it. that's why they like to see the movies advertised oh, on right, buses. Yeah. yeah, Peter Pan. Peter Pan. You know, because oh, do you fancy going to that? Do you fancy going to that to the cinema? Oh look, there's Shrek on the there's Shrek on the movie soon. Mum, what's the NSPCC? Oh, can we watch that movie too, please? <laughs> you know, a bit of hardcore Jimmy Savile videos. <laughs> right, shown, anyway. at, shown at your local cinema. Oh right, yeah, anyway, sure. Cool. Clear but uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you you begin to realise you, you you start seeing through the society you're living in. You begin to realise. That it's all a big dream. It's all yeah, an illusion. Yeah. It really it is. is yeah. The the fact of the the real fact is is that people don't get on with one another. People, as uh, Philip Larkin said, um, uh, old old men in, in oh uh, 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 one uh, at each, each other's, other's throats. throats. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's exactly what people like. You know, all all of the time. Yeah. Anyway, let's have a look at our electrolyzer. Yeah, now let's have a little look at our electrolyzer before we go any further. Ooh, of course. Ooh, excuse me, I've had a long day today. Now, we've been busy using our thermal imaging camera, which as is you quite, can see. as you can see. And we got, um, I'm just trying to think where the first video is. It's this. Oh, it must be there, right. So yeah. that's all uh, from the Fleur. Uh, oh, Fleur. Yeah. Right, go. okay, now. So what we what we got was that we got. Uh, I don't know. Let's switch this. Let's switch this. Oh, this is what you've. Uh, yeah, this is what this is what I did because we had, there's our electrolyzer. Oh, all the way from China. We've seen we've seen other people play with these things. There are quite a few people who promote distilled water. Yeah. Use these as a tool to convince other people not to drink bottled waters or tap water, water from, from the tap. tap. You know, <clears throat> and you know, it's our view that uh, it's, it's a bit of a scam or a bit of a skew on what's going on. Mm. So what we're doing is we're weighing um, each of the electrodes. Now, two, um, you've got one one electrode that's stainless steel, or it could be copper. That's uh, or it, uh, I don't think it is copper. I think it's. I think it's stainless steel. No, it could be copper or steel. It could be copper that's coated in stainless steel. Yeah, it could be plated. stainless steel plated. Yeah, yeah, it could be, but uh, I don't think like so. Like some cutlery. Like some cutlery, but I don't think so. I think it's stainless steel, and because I've not seen any evidence of of the water going blue. Yeah, but you won't because the the state's the stainless steel that. Well, I'd, oh, well, I'd, 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 I'd argue that. Mm. I'd argue that, and you've got aluminium. Okay, so you've got one electrode, is steel, copper stainless steel, copper coated, stainless yeah. steel, or stainless steel coated copper, or stainless steel, and the other one's aluminium, and uh, we're weighing them. Don't worry, don't worry about uh, recording the. Uh, the weights will come back to these, won't we? Yeah. When we're finished, because what well, we intend well move to do, it over. what we intend to do is uh, to, um, what we intend to do is to uh, weigh the electrodes to see if they've lost weight. Because mm. if they've lost weight, then we know, then we know that they've been decomposed. Right. Yes. It's all that. It's our view that. What happens with these electrolyzers is simply the electrodes decompose. Mm. So, because <clears throat> every this will relate back to our video, to the video we watched at the beginning. Mm. Yeah, come on. So you've got distilled water. So distilled water on one in one jar, and we've got uh, water from the tap. Come on, move it on the other. There we go. So there's tap water in there. 
and this one we've got distilled water. It's going, just going to do a TDS on them both. So this one, okay, come on, hurry up. We've got 117. Mm. I mean, for 117, that's not bad from water from the tap. Yeah, it's pretty good, actually. It's pretty clean, isn't but it? But you know some people... We're getting 400. Or, some people or, in certain yeah, areas would get 400. 400 yeah. So 117 isn't bad at all, mm. you know. Yeah, we can see that. Yeah, well, you wait till we start getting American meat over here. Oh, I know, yeah, sure, of course, yeah. Standards will drop. Absolutely, of course. And here we've, we've got... Uh, we're just resetting it for the um, distilled water we used here. Because we have a distiller. Because we have a distiller, of course. And we've got, uh, I think it was two. 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 Two points. Two points per million. Points. Now, so, yeah. So we, do, we, have, we have been doing a time lapse on this as well. Uh, but this is what happens. Oh, there we go. This is what happens. We've just switched it on there I think yeah there yeah, we there switched it on and you can see instantly this is just water from the tap list jar you can see instantly the, 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 the amount of bubbles the numbers of bubbles rising off rapidly from that electrode yeah. which is very similar to what we saw in the guy with his salt mm. and that is the that's the anode uh, sorry that's the aluminium and that must be the cathode yeah because well, yeah. you see more bubbles given off yeah, I would say that's that's the cathode. Yeah, the aluminium on this side is the cathode. On that side is the cathode. So I leave that running, and I do start. Uh, so we can see even the water is going um, yellowish mm. straight away, and the bubbles are forming. Okay, and um, and what we've noticed is that the bubbles are, are they've got kind of like a white kind of salt to them. Yeah, there's a there's a bit of a frothiness. We're we're not seeing much happen to the distilled water at all. So you know, so a lot of I can understand a lot of people would say, well, there you go. You know, the distilled water is better for you to drink hmm. than the the water from the tap. Yeah, but you you're not having. Um, but your body doesn't have an electrical circuit where it produces that hundred. Hundred volts. Hundred volts to be able to electrolyze. Yeah, sure. Yeah, the because my, in the water. my biggest gripe with using this to demonstrate the quality of water for consumption is simply that our bodies do not generate the kinds of voltage that this apparatus can generate. Mm. Because also the guy from South Africa that we highlighted at the beginning was saying that the minerals that would not are normally found in water from the tap are healthy for you well you need them well that, yeah no sure. that's what they'd say that's what these people would say sure yeah your potassium your sodium sure yeah. of course yeah sure anyway but you you get the gist of what's going on so uh what we did or what i did yeah uh, i think i can't remember what this is but i think this is this is a time, time lapse we took what happened was let's get this sorry yeah let's get straight so we went from we went from um, the end of this okay we went from the end of this and I set up uh, a time lapse and I found just th on the distilled water no did a time lapse on both but oh, I found that after about three minutes or four minutes the water in the tap on the right hand side sorry the water in the jug on the right hand side was getting so hot and it was bubbling off profusely that I thought I'd better stop because mm. I could even see water vapour coming off as well so I stopped so you didn't get a tea bag up no I stopped and I just concentrated on doing electrolysis on the distilled water mm. okay just to give everyone an idea on the temperature um, I think it was this one here, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Just oh, wait there. Sorry, do apologise. There we go. This we took using the the FLIR um, thermal image. We took a, an image of the um, temperature. Temperature. And you can clearly tell that around the water, around the electrodes, was at the time 55.9. And if you look at... Centigrade, the, degree centigrade. Degree centigrade. And if you look at the uh, jug... 
on the left hand side it's very cold mm. there's not much heat so you can clearly tell the water is getting very 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 hot indeed mm -hmm. and that's only got 114 tds reading mm. okay and the difference is absolutely astonishing yeah okay that i mean that's really that's it that is the amazing thing about it mm. isn't it mm. i was mean, quite surprised but um so what I, what I ended up doing was that I took the... Uh, so because it got so hot, I stopped the electrolysis with the wa water from the tap and just concentrated on the distilled water. Because a lot of people would say that um, if you don't get any impurities in the distilled water, well, you shouldn't get any impurities in the distilled well, water. Well, that's what they'd say, yeah. Because, you know, because a lot of people think the impurities, that the discoloration in the water is coming from the water, mm. the impurities in the water, okay? Whereas we think that's wrong. Yeah, no, yeah. There could be some kind of interplay or uh, interaction between the impurities in the water and the electrodes but essentially it's not all about the impurities in the water well this this the is discoloration this is the whole point of the guy at the, in the video that we showcased at the beginning sure because he was showing that the, this electrolyzer is a scam it's a bit of a well it is a bit of a scam really but we we so we did sort of i've done a time lapse um on the distilled water jar and we can clearly see at the top um uh, the iron. aluminium it's looking very iron like you know iron mm. ore orange and we can see a lot of froth foaming or building up around the top so we, we every now and again we we scrape it away from the yeah, electrode you want to connect the two sure electrodes but, bridge the electrodes so this is going on and we've had it going on for a couple of this must be a couple three couple, days isn't it? three days three days two three days now and we are starting to see lots of bits in the water. Mm. Okay. Yeah, see there. Oh no, that's the that's the markings in it. But one thing I would say, and that is the the bits do seem to be, they don't seem to be charged, as such. In other words, bit when we go back to the calcium, your calcium metal, mm. you can't say that the calcium metal was uh, turning into calcium oxide, and reacting with the oxygen. Mm. Because it it's the, the the stuff that's in the bag is 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 not really it's charged. Dead. It's, it's dead. dead. Yeah. Because it's being decomposed Post. by water. Yeah. So essentially, yeah, all of the bits that we see in the jug here, I I would say are not charged mm. as opposed to what the impurities in the tap water, the water mm. from the tap. Yeah, yeah. They seem to be more charged. Well, you're kind of deactivating it, aren't you? Yeah, kind absolutely. Of. But a lot, all of this stuff essentially is coming from the electrodes. It's got to be. Yeah. I mean, come on. We had uh, we've used distilled water. Two parts per million. Two parts per million. But what we are seeing is a decomposition of the electrodes. Mm. Okay. So we're going to well, keep this running for a while. Of both electrodes. Yeah. Of both electrodes. Absolutely. Yeah. Of both electrodes. Yeah. Because that frothy stuff is coming from the aluminium. But the the obviously the iron ore color is coming from the from the stainless steel. Stainless steel. Yeah, sure. So you know, and even on the bottom, we don't show it in this jug, but in the bottom, the bottom of the jug, there's a kind of a build up of all these heavy bits, isn't there? Well, the froth kind of falls, the, sinks to the bottom. Sure. Well, once the bubbles pop, a lot of it starts sinking to the bottom. Yeah. And uh, you know, there we go. But uh, you know, I mean, it's quite interesting stuff. Um, but uh, nonetheless, you know, quite interesting stuff. Mm. I don't think we need to show the um, the images anymore. I mean, this is another image of the the jar with the water from the tap. You know, you just you know, fifty seven degrees centigrade. You know, I mean, that's yeah. I mean, it was it was bub it was bubbling. I thought yeah. it was going to boil over. I tell you, uh, when I was looking at it. Yeah, anyway. There's another forty three. Um, have you got a comparison of both? Yeah, that one there is it, is it? Isn't that one of both? Is it or not? Or what? Well, it's just showing it's twenty three point four. Oh right, oh, sure. Oh right, okay. I would say that was. Um, oh right, oh, that, maybe that, that was, was before we started. Was that before we started? Yes, yeah, because the one on the oh. left showed a lot more. Um, oh okay, yeah, sure. 
but uh, yeah we can see this one this is the one on the right this is just the one with the um the distilled, distilled water, water yeah. we can see how the cold the water is so there's not much heat so being generated being generated between so, the electrodes yeah so it's the heat mm. that's being generated that causes a lot of the decomposition or that is the catalyst as well it's yeah. the heat mm. generated but uh, so that's uh, that's quite interesting and then we can go from there to Which have a little look <clears throat> at um, and that would also explain why our titanium electrodes didn't produce a lot of heat because there wasn't much conductivity between sure. the, the electrodes. Sure, absolutely, of course. Now, where's the uh, the bit about uh, the bit about the, the spanner? The guy with his rust. Oh, here you go. Look, there you go. Sorry about that. Really yeah. So, I mean, somebody we, somebody very kindly gave us uh, a link to this video as well. And this is uh, is electrolysis better than evapo rust? You know. Now, the thing is, is that. I mean, this is quite a little. This is quite good, demonstrating um, the electrolytic process. I'm trying to think. Get a bit, yeah. There, so there's his wrench and the nut and bolt that he wants to electrolyze to clean. get to get clean. So what he does is that he uses uh, he uses sodium sodium bicarbonate, I think, or sodium carbonate, uh, a solution of that. Sodium bicarbonate. Yeah, sodium Almond yeah, hammer. sodium bicarbonate, isn't it? No, sodium carbonate, isn't it? Super wash soda. No, oh, washing soda. soda. Yeah, absolutely, of course. So he uses that, uh, puts his hangs his things in a in an aquarium there in with water. He's doesn't, got a sacrificial uh, electrode, which is steel, and adds his sodium carbonate solution or sodium bicarbonate. So there we've got it there. So his anode is on the left. His anode's on the left. And the cathode is on the now, yeah, right. Short. Now, if we think that this is just a... If we think this is just a... So we know... Hold on. We know that the anode breaks down during yeah. the electrolytic process. Anodes will break down. So would he have not been better off using the wrench that he wants to clean up and the bolt. as the anode and not the cathode probably yeah sure yeah, yeah. but um yeah because you're wanting to remove that iron sure but let's just i think we can probably just have a little listen to this so wait there okay let's have a little listen to this so for the electrolysis process you want to put the positive on the sacrificial steel and the negative on the steel that you're trying to remove rust from so let's go ahead and plug this in and watch the process begin as you can see, there are some bubbles. That is hydrogen gas. Evaporust does not have any sort of acid. It's a very safe process for metal parts. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add the evaporust into this little container and then allow the process to begin. So we're going to come back in 24 hours and see what kind of progress has been made. It's been right at 24 hours. You can see there's a lot of action taking place inside this aquarium. You can see the oxygen bubbles coming off this rusted bolt as well as this wrench. You can also see the hydrogen bubbles coming off the steel. But yeah. on, but he, he's saying that the hydrogen's coming off here, the steel, but that's the anode. Yeah, he's getting his you anode. Get, you don't get hydrogen sure. off the anode. So, yeah, so when what you're doing something like yeah, this. What the guy's done is that he's looked up uh, the electrolytic process, hasn't he? Obviously, done yeah. a bit, little bit of research, but he's got his anode cathode wrong, round yeah, the no, wrong yeah. way. So, but the, the what 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 I thought was very very interesting in this video that he failed to, that he didn't overlook and that is this that he did overlook that he did overlook sorry and that is this bit here says is a picture that says an awful lot and that's the fact that all of the bubbles coming off from the wrench the nut and bolt plus the sacrificial anode are all the same size and that would yeah. tell me that you've got the same gas being produced absolutely and that's quite common when you have two electrodes of the same material absolutely of course if you get electrodes of the same material you're likely to get the same gas produced at both anode and cathode yeah yeah never mind it was that isn't that good eh isn't that good yeah. but because uh, oxygen bubbles are a lot larger than hydrogen hydrogen bubbles are very small yeah aren't they and we yep. can clearly see i mean let's have a little let's play this for a bit wait there let's just mute him we play this you know you can see that the bubbles are fine they're very yeah. very fine indeed 
Whereas you see that bubble there. Yeah. Now you could call that oxygen. Yeah. That would be an oxygen bubble because they're a lot bigger. But a lot of this uh, small so stuff. So you're saying you'll get an oxygen and hydrogen you, off at the same. Yeah, you you probably get oxygen and hydrogen off at the same, same. Yeah. thing. But obviously more hydrogen than oxygen. I yep. would suggest or say, yeah, absolutely, of course. But so you can clearly see all those little fine bubbles. You see oh, that large bubble going up? That yeah. was oh, that would oh, be oxygen. oxygen. Yeah. But I would have thought that he would have used the the wrench he wants to clean up as the anode. Sure. And not the cathode. Yeah, I know. Yeah, sure. But that what, essentially what what the demonstration does actually also show is that you even get um, your electrodes will decompose. Yeah. That's essentially what he's showing, and that is decomposition of your electrodes, mm. because the rust obviously, because he, he weighs them as well, these all of the bits apart from the sacrificial anode, he weighs the the wrench and the nut and bolt, and they all lose weight, mm. so they are decomposing. Hurting, yeah, sure. So yeah. you know, I mean, oh, because that's right, because he put, because he had this running for some time. Yeah, 72 hours, then another 72 hours, then another 72 hours. Yeah, he had it running for quite some Whereas time. Whereas if he'd have put it as the anode, he wouldn't have been waiting that long. Yeah, the even this bolt had lost um, two two grams. 77, 79. It started was, off as 79. It and it's 77. Seven. Yeah. So, you know, it had lost two grams. But then it makes you wonder... Oh, yeah, because then obviously... Uh, so certain... the two grams went into the water. Yeah, the other two grams went in the water. water. Yeah, sure. And uh, I think the same thing happens with the... Uh, or the vapour the... rust. Yeah, two grams of rust removed from each Which bolt. Part? And the that was... Uh, this is the sacrificial um, stainless steel or steel plate right. that he used. And you can clearly tell that it's, uh, it's uh, rusted up. You know, but he doesn't weigh it. But he doesn't weigh it. He should have weighed that to see whether that had lost weight as well. I'm reckoning it would have done. Yeah, it would have. Done, yeah. yeah, it would have lost weight. So Even the coat hanger. Has here's lost. the. Oh, let's wait there. Let's see. He does weigh the wrench. The wrench. Four four eight. Four four eight to begin with, and it's four four, four two. two. So you can clearly tell that you know, the if you had electrodes, you did the same kind of experiment or demonstration. You, you would get decomposition and weight loss of your electrodes. Yeah. So that indicates to us that it further supports our view that you're, de you're decomposing your electrodes and or electrolyte and you're not decomposing any water. So, yeah. Because when we do, if we go back to this, so if, if chemistry science, if you're listening, mate, you know, you've got you've got a lot of work to do to think to prove that water is hydrogen and oxygen. oxygen. Yep. Because a lot of people would probably take on board what this guy's doing and think that you're splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen. Well, this is what he thinks. And all of these bubbles are coming off because from the water. These bubbles are the water. Well, this is what he thinks. But we 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 think that's total mm. totally incorrect. And mm. these bubbles are actually coming off from the materials placed in the water. Yeah. And the and the and all the electrolyte, yeah. But it's the the water, we're beginning to realise the water is very very neutral. It's inert. It's basically inert. Yeah, we or, used to we used to think, uh, we we did used to think that uh, water was very high was highly corrosive. Corrosive. You know, clean, very very clean water. But we're beginning to think that, well, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just inert. Maybe it's just... It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. It's just a medium for... Um, Things to... Materials to exist in. in. Yeah. That's all it is. Like fish. Like fish, like salt, like... Poo. Like poo. Yeah, poo. Yeah, like poo. Piss. Absolute urine and a lot, you know. It's chlorine. Just chlorine, whatever you want to put in a, in a stream or in your ocean, you know. Well, but at the end of the oil. day, yeah, we're beginning to think that water yeah. isn't as... Uh, um, Corrosive, as, as people as might think. People might think. I mm. think that you it needs catalysts and other materials to make it more uh, aggressive, or to make those aggressive. So we could actually argue it's the ele electricity, heat, heat. Absolutely, yeah. Heat. Things that would sure uh, aid decomposition. 
<sighs> but anyway, I think we, we need to get on to our main. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Because we we it's sure. nearly an hour. Is it nearly an hour? It's well, nearly an hour. time's phone by, isn't yeah, it? No, no. Absolutely, having so much fun. Absolutely, of course. So, uh, yeah, what have helium and nitrogen got, got in common? In common. Mm. Oh, a lot of people would think, well, not much, but uh, uh, we, we well, tend to think they, they've got a lot in common. No, really. some, someone like chemistry science would put their hand up and say, they both don't support combustion. Oh, right, yeah, of course, yeah. You could use helium as a shielding gas, can you? Can you? Helium? You could. could. The only trouble is possibly. it's too light. Yeah, yeah, it's very light, yeah, sure. You'd have to use a lot of it. Yeah. Sure, but... Yeah. Um, it doesn't support life. They don't support life. Oh, right, yeah, of course, don't support combustion. But those kind of answers do have some bearing on what we're going to talk about. Absolutely, of course. Because we, someone left us a comment, or left us a link on how they make helium. Yeah. And his name, or their name, is up here. Oh, he's down there. Down there. Absolutely, of course, yeah. Can we go on to this little thing, how helium is made? Animation. Karth, Karthai explains. Here we go. Karthai explains. He's obviously some Asian guy. Most people guess that we extract helium from the air, but actually... Sorry, there we go. But actually, we dig it out of the ground. How wow. can we dig the gas out of the ground? Oh, I don't know. It's just ridiculous. But anyway, helium can be found in certain parts of the world, notably in Texas, as a minor component in some sources of natural gas. Really? The interesting thing is how this gas gets into the ground in the first place. Well, how Unlike virtually every other atom around us, each atom of helium has been individually formed after the formation of the Earth. Wow, this is The helium is formed during amazing. the natural radioactive decay of the elements such as uranium and thorium. Wow. These heavy elements were formed before the Earth, but they are not stable, and very slowly they decay. Yeah. One mode of decay for uranium is to emit an alpha particle. This alpha particle is actually just the heart of a helium atom. It's a nucleus. Once it has grabbed a couple of electrons, a helium atom has been born. Well, well, absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Absolute yeah. rubbish. It's just, it's just an explanation, but it means, yeah. it means nothing. It, it's anyway. just rubbish. But anyway, what's interesting about this video is that it actually um, gives a, an overview of the process of how helium is actually made. <sighs> so what we need to do is just, just quickly focus on this video because I'm considering about time sure and we could also go on uh, the wikipedia page on helium sure okay yeah sure so, so how is helium is made an animation you got a little uh got a little introduction there i wouldn't worry about it, it talks about ua alpha decay okay. then, then it talks about natural gas natural gas composition now you'll like this one now methane ethane propane butane condensates nitrogen di carbon dioxide Dioxide, hydrogen and sulfide, sulfide and helium you know so the, what they're saying to you straight away is that in a burning flame, you're going to get helium hmm. produced. There's a little bit of helium. No, okay, there's right. a little bit of helium in the natural gas. In the natural gas. Okay. Well, he did so what they need to do is... That's a flame there. That's a flame there. Oh, right, yeah. So, yeah, but what sure. they need to do... Is natural gas composition, and yet they've got it, it looks like a burning flame. Yeah, I know. But anyway, right. so what they need to do is they need to distill or extract that helium from the natural gas from the natural gas absolutely of course so we have processes here here i think no that's purified no, oh just, here we go this no, is if you just, yeah this is the start of it yeah but if you just do the overview so it's got all three processes you, all just, you don't need to go through there so you've got pre-treating separating, separating and purifying and purifying sure that's, they're the three stages. So the first stage, here we go. Look, so you get crude natural gas coming in. Okay. I mean, it's just so uh, we could really... Just actually, use the arrow key. Well, what I was going to do, I was going to go play speed back speed and just go one and a half. There you go. Look, because you've got a scrubber, cleans it. Mono Monoethanolamine, which, which is what, is what they, they use on nuclear submarines. subs or submarines to clean the air. And you've got the molecular sieve to molecular absorb the moisture. To, absolutely, yeah, to take out the moisture. And you've got another molecular sieve, probably. Oh, you've got to activate carbon. carbon. Mm. Oh, right, okay, to take out your... Just as, to, it's the same as cleaning water. Basically, yeah. That's all it is. So you're just cleaning, you're just cleaning the air Filtering. stream. 
It's a filter. It's a filter, yeah. Activate the So what you have here, it goes into Can't your... Can you speed up more than two? You've got your main heat exchanger. Let's just speed it up to uh, two. Two. Here we go. You ready? It should be there. Expansion valve. And obviously, it, uh, I think, does, is it this where it liquefies? Yeah, yeah, because it's yeah, the expansion like, valve. It's yeah. like your jaws. So you've got a high-pressure fractionating column. So what they're doing is they're liquefying it, and then the, the gas stuff. evaporates, impurities left on the bottom, and it evaporates, and they collect that the evaporated gas stream, essentially, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Which goes to the top, and it goes across... Uh, we don't want to go back. Yeah, because they've kind of recycled. It goes down to a condenser, which cools the gas, I would think. Reflux. Rubber. And you've got cold, cold crude, crude helium, helium. Mm. produced at that stage. You've got cold crude helium. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Seems reasonable. So let's carry on. And this is in your purifying stage. So you've got your cold crude helium product mm -hmm. goes into a heat exchanger, which then goes into a... So they're liquefying it. They're, they're liquefying, liquefying it. it. And then they add air. Oh, do they not? Yeah, but they add air. They add air. Preheating, pre catalyst bed, cooler, water separator. And here we go. You, here we go. Voila. You've got your pressure swing, swing absorption, absorption unit. unit. And what they're doing here you is they're, use, they, they're obviously using uh, activated carbon. No, well, yeah. Yeah, they're using activated carbon. This is the key of where um, helium and nitrogen have something in common. common. Absolutely. Well, essentially, yeah, helium and, and this, nitrogen. This is where they get their properties oh, from. Sure. Helium. Here we go. Helium. Here we go. Manufacture. Here we go. Just look up uh, molecular sieve. Just look up uh, what on the page. On the page, yeah. Find on this page. Sieve. S I E V. Hold on. Hold on. S E I V E. No. Or is it S I E V? No. Carbon. 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 Might not be here. I'm sure we had isn't. trouble. We had trouble finding it. Seven of seven. And seven next. Where are we? Next. I can't find where it is. Where, where do you go? Go on next. To go uh, new yeah, clean, next. carbon. Next. No. 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 I think you. Oh, here has been said. No. No. Next. I think you're. Uh, oh well, yeah. No, you. No, I did read in in the production. Go on the production. That's what I was going to do before I wanted to... Oh, I current some production. There you go. This is on the helium page. A, a production. Which supports the video we've just watched. Absolutely, of course. Doesn't really say. Uh, natural occurrence and production. Here we go. Um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, just scroll down. Modern extraction distribution. distribution. Yeah, for large scale use, helium is extracted by fractional distillation from natural gas. So they they're using a substance that they make hydrogen from. Yeah, yeah. Natural. They make hydrogen from natural gas. Okay, that's, that's one of the sources of oh, so hydrogen. See the here you've got activated charcoal is used as the final so purification step. step. But it, but yeah, but it's not. In our understanding, what they do, if you go back on the video, I'm going to go back on the video. Go back on the video. Oh, wait there. Come on. All they're doing in this process, in my understanding, is that they get a natural gas which contains methane, which is a source of hydrogen. Hydrogen, yeah. Is that they're actually purifying the hydrogen. And well, pur purifying the... Natural, natural gas, gas to, to then produce hydrogen. hydrogen and then they take the hydrogen and they take put it through a series of processes to take the flammability away, away from it absolutely which of course. will leave helium helium sure so and the pressure swing absorption unit if you go on pressure swing absorption for nitrogen nitrogen manufacture there you go nitrogen 
manufacture. Manufacture. There we Nitrogen go. Nitrogen is produced from air by cryogenic separation to pressure swing absorption. Yeah, it, yeah. Nitrogen nowadays. Nitrogen is mainly nitrogen produced. Nitrogen generator. There you go. Yeah, nitrogen generator, which is a pressure swing, swing absorption, absorption. Not, and it's filled with carbon molecular sieve. And the, the pressure swing absorption that they use at the final purification stage when making helium... Where's the same? I'd say they have uh, an activated carbon molecular Contact. slip. Molecular sieve, yeah, which is absolutely, of course. Because it takes away the, the flammable properties of the hydrogen. Yeah, so obviously it does have some effect on the airstream. The properties. Yeah, the properties yeah. of the airstream. So, which takes us back to the Daniel Rutherford, and is he making the nitrogen? Absolutely, and, of course. In, in this similar sense, so, yeah, are they making all, the helium? Yeah, so when we do yeah, when we do look at how helium is made, yeah, you've got the pressure spring absorption. All that what they're all they're doing is they're essentially getting um, naturally you're using natural gas as your as their source of hydrogen. That's a hydrogen source, crude natural gas, purifying it to get your purified hydrogen product, which is your crude helium cold helium yeah and then all they're doing is that they're putting it through a pressure swing some processes Purify. and a, and a, a pressure swing absorption act with activated carbon to take away its flammability properties. and then the properties of the hydrogen to produce helium. helium so essentially what we're saying is is that helium is exactly the same as hydrogen but you, you, it's in flam it's non-flammable yeah it's non-flammable hydrogen and the connection between helium and nitrogen is the carbon molecular sieve. The activated because carbon they're made, molecular sieve. They're made in using the same process. Carbon. Yeah, because to make nitrogen, you get the air and you put it through a carbon molecular sieve. sieve. Pressure, pressure swing, swing absorption. absorption. Because the, it takes out the, the life-supporting qualities of air. Takes it out, takes it away from the so airstream, the, and we all know that nitrogen doesn't support life. Sure, it doesn't support a flame. Absolutely. Well, it looks like we've done that one already. Yeah. But I was going to say about my my way, my new way of producing helium. Oh right, yeah. Oh, well, my yeah. way of producing helium, and that is, you see, what they could do is, is that uh, what they could do to produce helium, is that they could produce. Um, it, I know that in order for them to produce nitrogen, they could use iron mm. well, as, kind of, kind of, as a catalyst. It, it has some bearing on the Haber-Bosch Haber, Haber process. Bosch process. Or the Harbour. Harbour-Bosch. Absolutely, process, of course. Making but, ammonia. But what they could do with helium is that they could get hydrogen gas and they could pass it over hot iron, hot iron at pressure. Mm. And that would... In, that would basically take away the flammability of the hydrogen. Mm. The iron would essentially stain the hydrogen to True. make it into a helium-like product. A nitrogenous helium product. Sure. Yeah, basically. No, a nitrogenous hydrogen product. Oh, right, sorry, yeah. Of yeah. course. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I, I reckon that it's but doable. That would, that would cost too much money because you've got to heat up the iron. Whereas putting it through a carbon molecular sieve, yeah, but you, what you could do is you could make the, expensive. but you could make the helium when you're making the hydrogen in your steam reformation. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. So you know you can make it, you know you can make it there and then. All oh, right, yeah, because so you could use the same heat. You could use the same heat. You could you could basically do it all in the same thing. Wow, sure, you know. Yeah, and you can, but because you know they use the tubes with the nickel. Oh right, well, yeah. You could use the tubes and put iron inside them, and pass hydrogen through it under heat and yeah, and yeah, yeah. pressure because okay, yeah. they're all pressured. All these gases in these um, in these processes are all are all pressurized. Oh yeah, you know. But you know, I think that's a great way. You know, I mean, yeah. if anyone bodding out, if anyone is a bodding chemist out there and wants to make themselves a little pattern. I don't know whether it's been done before, but uh, yeah, of producing helium, a way of producing helium gas, and that's simply to pass hydrogen gas over an iron catalyst. Mm. 
and uh, pressure. What, and what better way to do that by than by incorporating it within a process that already uses heat and hydrogen? Heat and hydrogen, yeah, absolutely, of course. You know, and you're, you're laughing, aren't you? Yeah. Really. Making money use, on that. And they use heat when they use that when they um, sure for hydrogen steam reformation process. Yeah, I know. Yeah, sure. That's what I've oh, just yeah. said. Yeah, anyway, so there you have it, you know, I mean, so what What have helium and nitrogen got in common? common? Well, they've got quite a lot in common, common yeah. especially when it's uh, related to activated carbon. Yeah. Nitrogen and pressure swing adsorption. Nitrogen is produced by passing air through carbon molecular sieve, pressure swing adsorption system, and helium is manufactured by passing hydrogen through a carbon molecular sieve, sure. a and pressure swing absorption sure. system. And argon is produced by passing oxygen through a carbon molecular sieve uh, pressure swing, swing absorption, absorption system. system. Yeah, isn't, you know, it, isn't it amazing? Isn't it how, amazing? How man relies on his pressure swing absorption. Absolutely, to make a lot of his gases, of yeah. course. Isn't it wonderful? So is, is there it, we go. look at that. It feels as if we've uh, arrived at some, some kind of... Uh, Climax. Yeah, we have. So, uh, yeah, there you have it. So, thanks ever so much. Hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it, well, it's tough. Tough. Uh, But uh, thanks ever so much. And always remember till next time, if something doesn't make sense, like water being made of hydrogen hydrogen and oxygen. oxygen. The air comprising 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen. Absolutely. Helium being a, a naturally occurring gas. Oh, no, it's a result of radio uh, radioactive decay. decay. Absolutely, of course, yeah, of course. You know, How can uh, something so light exist in the ground? Absolutely, I know, yeah, it's just crazy. Or even natural gas, so this thing called natural gas. Oh, right, yeah. When you yeah. would have thought it'd just permeate up through. <sighs> well, it, but, yeah, sure. I'm trying to think how gases can exist down below. Yeah, but, but our view is that it's not natural gas, it's yeah. man-made gas. But, yeah, they make the gas by dissolving the rock. Oh, and right. the gas is a byproduct of yeah. that process. Yeah. Well, someone told me that um, that uh, apparently, it could be wrong, but apparently they're, they're, they could be f- trying to phase out gas. I don't blame them, yeah. They could they, actually be trying I to think phase out I gas. Think I think man's trying to rely heavily on electricity. Just, yeah. Because it's the safest way to produce energy, to produce energy by using nuclear power, and by preserving, and it's more efficient, and by preserving the environment, and by preserving the environment. Absolutely, of course. Because the last thing we all want to be is uh, for the whole ground that we're walking on to cave in, in because of all, it's all been dug Drop. up yeah. underneath our feet. Absolutely, yeah. of course. Anyway. That'd be quite funny, wouldn't it? Come on. Anyway, so yeah, it's all rubbish, isn't it? Of course. Yeah. So uh, thanks ever so much. And we'll see you next time. time. Oh, and just before we go, we should mention a little bit of our, a little bit of a teaser with those ones. Or we're not no, bothered. Well, no, we're well, not going to bother. Yeah. Till yeah. Some, next time. Till next time. We'll do that next time, of course. So sorry about that. But yeah, it's all nonsense, isn't it? Of course. Thanks so much. We'll see you next, next time. time. Okay. Bye. Ta-da. The Earth isn't round. It's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat everywhere. It's flat.